What is goody gang? So today I'm going to be talking about every aspect to expect for Genshin 4.5 so just sit back and relax and enjoy. So beginning with the regular banners lineup, I will start in phase 1 where we are said to get Chiori who is the new character for this patch and is a Geo Sword character. Along with her though we are said to be getting Ito which is pretty cool since he last re-ran in version 3.3 and Chiori is not a terrible support option for him. Overall this first phase is not too bad and is mainly really only good if you want to have a mono Geo team or if you just want the new character. So now I will move on to the second phase which is said to be a lot more insane. So with the phase 2 characters, we are actually said to get Nuvalet in here which is an insane character even at C0 for F2P, and he is definitely worth pulling for. This is also signifying they are starting to rerun the Fontaine region characters as they usually do in the .5 patches of each region. However the other character in this phase is just as crazy as it is said to be Kazuha, and he is also an insane character to pull for as he is very versatile. It definitely will be hard to pull between the two, but I think that at this moment in time Nuvalet is just far better because of how strong he can be. So now I will move on to the new banner system lineup. So for the new banner system lineup, we are said to be getting a regional banner in every patch, and this patch is said to start with Mundstadt as the patch is said to have a main event in Modstadt. As per who is rerunning her, we are said to get Eula as she last reran in version 3.8, so she won't have to be waited for another 500 days to get her. On top of that we are said to get Clay who usually reruns in the summer but the regional banners kind of changes that. Lastly, we are finally said to get Albedo who reran in version 3.1, but it is kinda pointless when you have Chiori who is a better Albedo support. But with that out of the way I will now move on to the 4 stars predicted to be in here. If Ito reruns in this phase then we will automatically see Gore spawn into the banners here as well. Another thing to note is that Lynette is said to get a hangout quest in 4.5, and I think those always release in the first phase so we could potentially see her rerun in this phase as well. She is honestly a pretty mid character so I am definitely glad she made it into this cluster of characters because I do not think I'm pulling for any of them to be completely honest. As per the third character, it has been speculated for a while that we get Yun Jin in the 4.5 first phase banners and this is likely considering she is a decent Geo support character as well. She last re-ran in version 3.7 so it is not terribly far back in comparison to some other 4 stars but it is definitely enough to warrant a rerun for her. So now with all of this out of the way, the first phase is in predicting to have Yun Jin, Gore, and then Lynette in here which is honestly mid but we low key need to keep all the bad ones in here because the phase does not seem good in general. So now I will move on to the Genshin 4.5 phase 2 predictions for the 4 stars. So Zinquayu got a skin in 4.4 so it is very likely that he gets a rerun in the following version because people want to pull for a character they have a free skin for. So I imagine he will rerun in the second phase, and now we will have to look at some data to see who can rerun in the second phase with them. So for the other character we could very likely get Layla to rerun as she is last reran in version 3.6 so she is long overdue for a rerun and is a great shielder so this makes the banner even better. Now if we go off the pattern of giving 4 star reruns to those who have not rerun in a while, we unfortunately would get Mika to end up in this banner which is honestly very sad because he is like a the little stain on a stupendous banner. He last reran in version 3.8 so this is unfortunately the other character who has not reran in the longest time aside from Layla. So second phase I am predicting Layla, Zinquayu, and then Mika as the second phase banner. So I will first go ahead and talk about her skill and then her burst and then her passives to evaluate if she is good or not. So beginning with her skill, what she basically does is she dashes forward and when she dashes forward she will summon one puppet which will deal O damage to opponents based of off Chiris defense and attack. However, with the dashing it is very similar to Keking's teleport ability, where you can either tap to dash forward or hold to angle where you want to dash which is pretty cool. In terms of what her puppet will do, it will hit nearby opponents in intervals of around 3.6 seconds, and it will deal O Geo damage based off of Chiris ATK and def. You would definitely want Geo constructs nearby, which are just objects or things made from Geo which you can get from other Geo users such as Zhongli, Albedo, Ningguang, or even the Geo Traveler if you still use him. 
If there is a geo construct nearby though, another puppet will spawn in and will do the same thing as the other puppet in terms of how it will function and deal damage. The second puppet will have its own duration to be on field, so each puppet will be active for a certain amount which can guarantee some off-field geo damage which is pretty cool. On top of this, the puppet's duration is 17 seconds meanwhile the cooldown of the skill is 16 seconds, so you are basically having 100% uptime on the puppets which can make rotations definitely feel pretty smooth. I think this is a great source of off-field geo damage, but my only concern is that the puppets only attack every 3.6 seconds, which does seem pretty long and means you can only get around 5 hits for each puppet so a total of 10 hits which is not terrible considering you can have them on field 100% of the time. With that being said though I will now get on to the burst. So her burst is actually insanely simple, there is not a whole lot to it, but that is not necessarily a bad thing. So with her burst, she will use the twin blades she has as seen in her drip marketing and she basically slices her opponents in an O type of passion and will deal geo damage based off of her ATK and def. The scalings are actually insane as she is said to deal a total of 651% ATK plus 814% def at level 10 for her burst damage and there is not much energy involved either. She only needs 60 energy and this means you can trigger her bursts a lot, and her cooldown is every 15 seconds too so this is a pretty good amount of times you can use her burst throughout rotations. So that really is all there is to the burst, and I will now get into the passives. So her first passive is actually insane as there are actually two different things the passive gives you based on what you do after you deploy your skill. So once you use her skill, you have 2 seconds to use her skill again, and if you do use it again it will switch to the next character on the team. When you switch to the next character on the team, the puppets will deal coordinated attacks whenever you do normal, charged, or plunge attacks that hit the enemies. The coordinated attacks will only trigger every 2 seconds and this will last for 8 seconds, and they will also deal a bit more damage than they usually do with coordinated attacks. I am assuming they will still deal the normal damage every 3.6 seconds as well but that could be overridden by this for the 8 seconds which is unclear. But if you do not press her skill again in those 2 seconds or you do a normal attack with Chiori, Chiori gains a 5 seconds geo infusion which is kinda like Keking so it is pretty cool. As per her other passives, when another character makes a geo construct Chiori gets a 20% geo damage bonus for 20 seconds. Her last passive gives 10% movement speed bonus when someone on the party wears an outfit or as a glider that is not the default one which is pretty cool as well. Overall Chiori seems like a pretty great sub DPS, burst DPS, and potentially even an on-field DPS with her second passive and this is all at C0. She does seem like a great flex character but the only downfall is that she has split scaling, so you need to manage both def and ATK and this can make her overall damage fall flat, but you never know. Beginning with her skill, there have not been many changes but there was one pretty significant change that I think will result in a lot of damage loss. So the puppets that Chiori summons from her skill were used to be able to snapshot Chiori's def, so if Chiori had a def bonus which went away the puppets would still deal damage scaling off of that higher def. However, this was changed and now the puppets are no longer able to snapshot which I think is a major L, because they also never snapshot at ATK so now they snapshot nothing. On top of this though, the puppets used to generate particles every 1.9 seconds off field, but they now generate them every 3 seconds which is a major downgrade because it will be harder for Chiori to get her burst. But now with the skill changes out of the way, I will now move on to her burst changes which are actually full of both nerfs and buffs. Her burst cost has went down from requiring 60 energy to now only 50, which hopefully can make up for the major loss in particle generation but we will have to wait and see. The cooldown of her burst also went down from 15 seconds to 13.5 seconds so we do have some pretty decent reductions for her burst. However, a very tragic thing about her is that her burst multipliers have went down significantly and she is not going to deal as much damage from her burst as before. The reduction is actually so significant that it is a 30% decrease in damage which I honestly think is terrible considering she does not really have much sources of damage aside from her puppets. However we do have one more buff slash nerf with her burst which is that she is able to launch enemies into the air with her burst. I am not entirely sure if this is a buff or not considering a lot of characters cannot deal damage when enemies are launched up and in the air, so it depends on how high enemies are launched. Now I will move on to her constellations that got some changes.
So her second and fourth constellation both got some swaps, and the new C2 constellation was actually the C4 constellation before. I think honestly the old C4 constellation is worse than the old C2 constellation so the swap just entices players to get to C4 but honestly I don't really know who is even pulling for her. Her new C2 just summons a puppet that will strike once every 3 seconds for 10 seconds and then despawn which is not bad but I really think you can just stop at C1 anyway. Her C6 also got a major damage upgrade and increases Chiori's normal attacks by a large amount of her def. For the events in this patch, we are first said to be getting a Cat Cafe event in Munstadt which I think is going to be the main event for the patch. I think we are going to be able to interact and pet cats and stuff so pretty cool I guess. As per the mini events, the first one is said to be some alchemy shop simulation type of event. I'm assuming this is just mixing stuff together to make a concoction or something. After this the phase trials are apparently going to get its rerun yet again and I feel like we see this event more than the dragon's bane and the weapon banner. Lastly though we are said to get a cannons vs slimes event which is going to be cool because I imagine we can just blast slimes. Now for the other parts of the patch, Lynette is supposedly getting her hangout event in here, so I think that she could be in the banners as well. Lastly, Chiori is said to get a story quest as well which makes sense considering this is her debut. There isn't a whole lot of patch related things aside from the basic stuff that we get every patch. Now I'll move on to the miscellaneous stuff for this patch. So in this patch we are supposed to get a free weapon but it isn't really known what that is. However, I am assuming the free weapon will be a free sword. Next, we are said to be getting a total of 60 pull as F2P which is insanely low and I think the lowest of any patch. Lastly, Nouvellet, Charlotte, and Carrara are all said to be in TCG for those who even play that. There's nothing really else to this patch as it is a pretty dry one but the .51s are usually a little dry so it makes sense. There isn't any map expansions or extra rewards so it definitely is a drought patch where you can catch up. Beginning with the repeated rewards or the ones we get every patch, we get the usual 2520 primogems from the daily commissions. Believe it or not, but this is actually more than 25% of the total rewards we are receiving this patch. Moving on to the abyss, this is going to reset 3 times during the patch so we are going to get a total of 1800 primogems from this alone. As per the character trials, it is still the expected 80 primogems because I am assuming there are not going to be any trials for the regional banner characters. Lastly, we have the Stardust Exchange which can give you 800 Primos worth of fates for the Star Glitter and Stardust so 1600 total. But now with all of the regular routine rewards out of the way I will now move on to the patch related rewards. The patch is going to be having its own quest which is worth 120 Primogems so I do not think this is necessarily anything special to really acknowledge. The 120 Primogems come from the Chiori story quest which gives 60 Primogems and the supposed Lynette hangout which is also giving 60 Primogems. Now moving on to the events for this patch, we have the same format where we have 3 small events which will give 420 Primogems each. After that we have the main event which I am assuming is going to be the Munstadt event and is said to give a total of 1000 Primogems which is pretty common for a main event. Lastly, we are said to be getting a few more achievements which will add up to be a total of 30 Primogems from the achievements. Now with all of that out of the way I will now move on to the miscellaneous rewards. The Hoyo Lab login bonus is going toggle the typical 80 primogems for logging in every day. On top of that we have the Twitch drops and codes which will give us a total of 90 primogems if you are sweaty and go for those. Then we do have the solid chunk of primos from the web events which personally I think take way too much time but they give a total of 200 primogems combined. Lastly, we have the 4.6 livestream codes which will drop us 300 primogems coupled with the 4.5 maintenance update which will give us a total of 600 primogems, combining to 900 primogems. If we add up all of the rewards, we get a grand total of 9680, which is one of the worst patches in terms of rewards for F2P players and is honestly very disappointing. This translates to 60 pulls which is very low and a supposed 32 pulls in phase 1 which is honestly wild since Chiori is more than likely in this phase so I doubt many would even pull for her. Welkin players do not even get a full guarantee for a 5 star as they only get 81 pulls total for the whole patch, and then those with both Welkin and Battle Pass get a total of 14,400 Primogems in total. 
Overall I think these rewards are awful especially when we had people complaining about rewards in the previous patch, but let me know what you think of the rewards in the comments below.